Hello and welcome back to Project Los Alamos. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at torch setups and how they work. Torches are made up of eight main parts and are a necessary component when you want to do glass work. This specific style of glass work is known as lamp work. Glass blowing is more when you use a big furnace to melt the glass and lamp work is when you use a smaller torch such as the ones you see before me and do more bench top work. Let's get into the components and take a look at how they all function to make a lamp working torch work. Over here we have the bulk of the components, seven of the eight necessary ones. Let's first start off with the oxygen tank, which is the big green tank here. Most of the time oxygen tanks are green, and you can tell that they're oxygen by checking the label on the sides. This is another small oxygen medical grade tank, which also has green on it, signifying that it's oxygen. Just because it's green doesn't always mean that it's oxygen. In some cases, other tanks are marked green, even though they are not oxygen, such as this compressed argon tank, which is green, yet it isn't oxygen. Now an oxygen tank is important to the lamp working setup because it supplies the oxidizer to the fuel, which is propane in this case. It's an oxypropane torch. On the tank, there's a few important parts. First is the top regulator. The top regulator is normally covered by a cover that looks like this and it just screws off. This protects it from knocks when it gets knocked over. If this breaks off, it kind of turns into a big giant rocket, which isn't good, especially with the high pressures that are within. You can tell the pressures in a tank by the numbers on the side. Here it says 2015, which comes out to 2015 PSI. But that's not the total pressure in the tank because if you go around to the other side and look at these marks here, there are a bunch of random numbers which mean nothing to you until I tell you what they mean. The first number signifies the month in which it was tested, one being January, and then the numbers of who tested it, and then when it was tested, which this is 21. Tanks like these are good for 10 years, and then you go to plus and star means it can be filled over 10%. So. That's 215 PSI plus 10%, one completely full. Now onto the top, you have the gauge pressure release up here, which you open it up and twist it open to let out pressure and close it to close it. Simple enough. Then you go off to the regulator. The regulator has two gauges on it. The first gauge is the pressure within the tank and the second gauge is the pressure within the hose. And we see on the PSI gauge, we're running a little over 1600, 1700 PSI. And then on the output, we're running about 10 PSI, give or take, because this gauge is more for high pressure scenarios. Then we have the main regulator here, which you spin it to adjust the pressure. Then we have an important part here, which is a flashback arrestor. This is important because you don't want fuel getting back in the tank. This normally doesn't happen, but the scenario is safe and sorry. Then we have the tube, which leads all the way back to the torch. Now on to the propane, the fuel. Propane also has a number on the side, which tells you when it's been tested. And this is just a standard tank that you can get at Menards or any place that sells propane. This is more a specialty tank, which you have to go to a welding supply store, which they have them absolutely everywhere. This one just happens to be Great Lake Welding, which is more of an Indiana store. But they have air gas and depth key, which is all over the United States. You just Google local air gas supply store, or local depth key, or local welding supply, and they'll pop up. Now onto the propane. Now this says acetylene, but that's just because propane and acetylene both have the same regular sizes. Which each tank has a different regulator size, so you don't get regulators matched up with different tanks, and then you have issues. This just happens to be a CGA 510, and this is a CGA 540, which is once again the threads here. So, oxygen regulators work with oxygen, and acetylene regulators work with propane and acetylene. Once again, basic setup, but instead of like the oxygen, which is a gas, complete gas inside. Propane exists at a liquid at room temperature and at 100 PSI. So there's actually a liquid in there which boils off as you use propane and the pressure drops. This then comes out of the regulator stem here, 
which same again you open it up to let the propane out most of you has used these before so it's not that complicated then you get into the two gauges once again and in here we have a little over 100 psi and then over here we are regulated at about 2 psi which this can be twisted to adjust the pressure then we have the flashback arrestor which then leads in the hose once again safe than sorry most of the times these aren't used and a lot of times you don't see them on people's setups but it's better to be safe than sorry in my opinion so I have one then that leads into the hose which the hose is two different types once again green being the oxygen and the red being the fuel and then that leads over to the torch now let's get into the torch operation torches are quite simple themselves they're made up of three components the mixing head and then the valves which let in the gas once again green being oxygen and red being fuel red being fuel this silvery color being oxygen red being fuel this silvery color being oxygen these torches all have similarities in the way that they're all surface mixed torches these holes is where the gas comes out and the fuel mix is there these three torches also are the same style in which they are the burners that are the smaller size except for this one also has the major on the bottom which is this giant head here which allows more fuel and more gas to come out if you're wanting to work on a large piece that needs to have more surface area get more hot but this one is the one that I've plumbed up so we'll be taking a look at this one and I have the view set up so you can see it how you normally would with your facing on it and then you'd work with the glass here now it's important to remember when you're working with your torches to have them nice and secure and clamped down because you don't want something that's really hot and has a giant flame shooting out of it coming off your bench and melting your leg so I just have a basic C clamp and it's nice and fixed to the bench now how do you light the torch use a striker or you can use another torch to light it off you begin by opening the red knob and you'll hear the gas start to come out and you light it then you open up the oxygen you're going to want to open it until the flames or the candles is where the gas mixes become a whitish yellow at the tips this means that you have a neutral flame the different flame chemistries is important in glass blowing let me grab a pair of glasses and I'll take a closer look at it and you'll see what I'm talking about because the camera doesn't really pick it up unless you have special goggles on and then those are the jets or the candles but the camera still doesn't want to seem to pick it up as nice as they're coming out in person but you generally see where the tips where they're more rounded inside of the flame is like a regular candle in color this means you have a neutral flame which is once again important for the flame chemistry because different flame styles allow you to do different things with the glass now glass working the different colors have different materials in them so by adding different chemicals from the gases into them you're able to cause them to change colors or adjust how they look or in the case of if you have metals embedded in your glass you be able to oxidize them or reduce them so if you want an oxidizing flame you add more oxygen you can directly notice that the flame got a lot smaller this is because there's more oxygen pushing through and less fuel. This fuel stays the same, but there's more oxygen being not used up. And then let's set it back to neutral. And also those nice candles inside of it disappear. Then a reducing flame means you have too much fuel, which it becomes more of a orange in the center, like a regular flame. Now these torches are known as surface mixed torches which means the fuel mixes at the surface of it. These are great because the fuel doesn't mix inside of it and is only mixing and combusting where it can combust on the outside, which this is important for the flashback arresters too, which it keeps it from flashing back once again because they're not mixed together before and they're all in separate channels. And in the case it was, we have those flashback arresters to make sure that it doesn't. Our lamp working torches work in practically the same way as a regular blowtorch. This is just a regular propane torch. Once again, this is an oxypropane torch. This is an oxypropane torch too. But except this one uses pure oxygen 
and this uses 21% out of the atmosphere. And it works in the same way. You start the fuel, and then this one works off a draft system where it pulls oxygen, the jet stream of the gas pulls oxygen through these holes right here, which then com mixes and combusts at the end. You can see when they cover up, the flame adjusts. And to turn off the torch, first you deactivate the oxygen and then the propane. This keeps the oxygen from mixing with the propane accidentally and backburning and causing issues such as explosions, which are fun, but not when they're right next to you. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please drop a like, and if you like my content, please consider subscribing. And if you don't like this video, check out another one. I'm sure you'll find one that you like, which will gain your subscription. I'm going to make the previous video, which I currently have labeled 1 as 0, and then this one 1, starting off the new series, considering this is more of an in-depth view of the torch setup, and in the previous video I just used a propane torch. And if you want to support the channel, and my creative endeavors, and my scientific endeavors, please consider checking out my eBay store, link in the description, where you will find different things I have for sale, such as chemicals and elements which one new thing that I'm adding today, which is a magnesium ampule, which I made myself, and I think are pretty nice. Yeah, I'm going to say I have to say that because I made them myself. So, check out eBay, subscribe, say something in the comments, because I tend to respond to all comments unless I don't feel like it, but most of the time I respond to them. So, see you later. don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. I sold my cad, I bought me a jeep, I got that bug and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all